number of times you eat in a restaurant or take or take out. Well, let's look at the question. The question specifically asks, how many times a week? So, it's hard to ask that question and get a continuous answer, because how can you get takeout two and a half times a week? Can you? Is that possible? You can't get half. So I would consider that more discreet. Um, what about the type of salt that you use? Discreet. Let's see what else. Which one would be? Do you ever eat poultry, such as chicken or turkey? Is that continuing to be discreet? Discreet. Okay. Um, all right, so we have to sort of get the point. So we are continuing to be discreet, sort of, sort of. They're not usually cut and dry, which is why I didn't like it when I was taking statistics classes and people were like, well, this is clearly this, this is clearly this, because I don't want to tell you guys that it's ever going to be cut and dry, but you can sort of tell okay? So the next thing is um, nominal or ordinal data. So nominal, and you can think of it as nominal, which is like name, and then ordinal, which is number. So nominal data is any variable that is not a number, it is a value, and it can't be ordered. So if the question says, I, are you, what is your gender? That is nominal because you're either male or female. And you can't say that male is higher than female. It's more than female. Or female is more than male. But if I ask you how many times you eat at a restaurant, and then I or I can rank those, right? The person who ate out three times more is higher than someone who ate two times, right? See what I'm saying, sort of? Okay. So ordinal data is something you can rank, and nominal data is something you can't. So we can rank weight. Someone who weighs 180 pounds weighs more than someone who weighs 140 pounds. Can we ever argue that, that you can rank that? No? Yes? Maybe? How about someone who's six feet tall is taller than someone who's five foot five? That's something you can rank, so that's ordinal. Um, what if I ask you if you are married or single? Is that ordinal or nominal? Nominal, because I can't, what is single, higher, lower? And if I ask your, your race, you know, black, white, Hispanic, Indian, can you really say which one is higher or lower? No, so you can't. All right, so looking at, hello, looking at your list again. Um, let's see which question. Do you eat poultry? Is that nominal or ordinal? Nominal. Okay, what about how many times a week you drink milk? Nominal or ordinal? Ordinal, you can drink how many times people drink milk. Someone who drinks milk five times a week drinks it more than someone who drinks three times a week. Okay, um, what about age? Nominal or ordinal? Okay. Um, yeah, you can say that someone's older than someone else. You're saying you're saying that one should be one or the other? It's like basically it's statistical testing, right? We we use numbers to do certain statistical tests. Like the statistical tests that we have done so far in this class have been determining the mean or median or both. So Let's say we're looking for the mean. Um, okay, we can say that the average age here is 16. We can also say that the most common gender here is female. I don't know if that's true. Okay, um, but what if we were gonna say that there's, let me, let me think of it, and I will tell you. I don't wanna say anything bad, it's too easy, okay? Um, all right. And what else? And the other one that I want to talk about is categorical data. So sometimes it's easier to put things into categories. Like we were talking about weight, 
we can have that as a continuous variable where it's like any weight is possible. Or as a researcher, it might be just easier to say, okay, um, I'm going to group the weights into categories. So if you weigh like from 100 to 120 pounds, that's category one, and 121 to 140 is category two. For whatever reason, sometimes it's easier to do that. So that, that is called categorical data. And the reason I'm even specifying that there's different types of variables and different types of data continuous discrete is because there are hundreds of statistical tests that you will learn later in your schooling that you have to know continuous or discrete before you do it because you can't use that test for continuous, for example. You have to know if it's categorical before you do it because you can't use certain tests for non-categorical data. And there's a lot of tests, for example, that work with binary data. You know what binary data is? Binary is when there's two choices, like male or female, yes or no. A lot of questions ask you yes or no. And based on that, there's like 50 tests that only use binary data. You can't use anything that's three categories. Only two, okay? So it's sort of important to understand, I'm not necessarily saying group it into, like if we're practicing grouping it discrete, continuous, ordinal versus nominal, but it's important before you do your statistical testing to understand your data, to understand what kind of variable you're working with, okay? So, for example, temperature. Let's say we're working in a, in a chemistry lab, and we are testing the effect of a temperature on synthesis of a certain compound. Like at, at certain temperatures, the compound will be synthesized. At certain temperatures, it will not be synthesized. So temperature is, you know, anything. So temperature can be 32 and a half degrees, 32 and 40 degrees, 32 full degrees, right? So we can test it like that as a continuous, or we can test it as a discrete. We can say, okay, well, we're gonna just test between 32 and 35, and then 35 to 37, things like that, okay? So you have to decide as a researcher what kind of variable you're dealing with. And I just wanted to show you some different applications, okay? Yes? So um, like researchers actually do like two different types of experiments at the same time, like the like, um, nominal and ordinal and stuff like that? Um, sometimes they, like, someone did it like that, and then and they specified what kind of they're using, and then they did it another kind. Sometimes they run it simultaneously, and sometimes they do it afterwards. Like, when I was doing, when I was doing research, I had data from 70,000 people, and I had to decide beforehand if I was going to use age, for example, as continuous, or if I was going to group the age. Because depending on whether I was going to do one or the other, my results were going to come out pretty different. So these things are important. So I mean, if the results are similar to the two experiments that they get out, do you think it will go more accurate? Well, yeah, if you prove that you can show it both ways, then yeah, the results will be more accurate. So it depends on what you're doing, again. Yeah. So I'm just trying to show you that you need to understand your data. This is my whole point today. Okay, um, so we've looked at nominal versus ordinal, and we've looked at continuous versus discrete, and yes? Can you explain what ordinal is? Do you want me to explain continuous versus discrete too? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all this is on the sheet right here. Um, so again, discrete is when um, a variable has distinct and separate categories and they can be counted in whole numbers. Yeah. So discrete and continuous compare, we are contrasting these. So discrete is they belong to a distinct and separate category and they can be counted in whole numbers. So like I was saying, um, example to use here, the number of kittens in the litter, that's a discrete number, there cannot be half a kitten, hopefully. Um, number of patients in a doctor's surgery, number of flaws in a meter of cloth, your gender, and a blood group. There's four blood groups, two genders, and these are discrete categories that you can belong, the variable you can belong to. And we were saying how we were looking back at our survey that we did the first time we were here. And so like, let me see. If you look at question eight, for example, um, how often do you add salt to your food at the table? And you have four choices, never, rarely, occasionally, and very often. And those are discrete categories.